Uh, kia ora koutou, ko hei mohi toko ingoa. Um, I'm the hit today of uh, Kafano Apuni. So it's a, a tribe up the coast. Well, I've been asked to talk about uh, iwi, um, iwi interpretation or iwi insights. Got to flag something first. I'm actually a Pākehā fella. I'm reliably informed I'm a married to a Ngātiawa princess. Um, I have um, Māori tūgun, mokos, and I work for the chief at the final Afini, so Rukka and Engage uh, has asked me to come and help his people um, with their aspirations in this space. The clip to hear on both. Uh, uh, and more than one of you will know the Karangi. Uh, where's the Whanau Apanui? Apanui is uh, in that la the rohi is just up there in, on the screen. It runs just past the Pōtiki up to a place called Pōtaka. Uh, in your vernacular, that's probably Cape Runaway. Uh, interestingly enough, there's about 186,000 hectares of, of the Moana. Uh, sorry, in the Fenwin, there's about 189,000 hectares of the, of the Moana. Um, almost 400,000 hectares of seawater space under the Maka claim. So that's quite an interesting amount of seawater space that the Fano have at their fingertips in terms of development. An insight into, into um, the iwi and, and the moana and I guess by default seaweed. The Karangi would say, and the, uh, the whanau would say, they've only got one relationship and only got one responsibility and that's with palaroa. Now for most of you people <laughs> listening in the room, they'll go, what's that? But for the whanau, it's a really deep connection, it's a deep responsibility and they've been doing it for a thousand years. I find it interesting listening to some of the, the corridor around regulation and legislation in the seawater space, but I promise you they'll be looking after it harder and longer than any rest will be and have been for a long time. So uh, with that kind of deep association, deep connection, we won't do anything in the seawater space that would hurt or suggest um, an imposition on the seawater space because of that very relationship. So that's the first insight I'd like to share. The second insight probably that stands out for me is this. You know, we make a, we, uh, there's a general underpinning logic about economic imperatives. We will understand that we both make some money. But the functional reality is this. For the whanau, they've only, the real reason for all of this, it's about the health and well-being the social outcomes for the people. It's all about health, education, employment, justice outcomes. And if we can do that through the through the Moana and the Fina, that's what our aspiration is. So whilst economics is an imperative, it's a means, it is not an ends. So if you've got those two worldviews, a te ao Māori worldview on approaching investments and seaweed and the like, then you kind of have a different worldview than if you attack it like a commercial proposition. And the other thing that I often hear, which makes me smile from sometimes, is commercial, industrial, stakeholders, and iwi. Hey fellas, everybody, <laughs> they do the first two things. So we're deeply entrenched in all of those other things. The thing about the whanau is the median household in income um, up the coast is $16,700 a year. So we're pohara, we're poor. So we need to find ways to get out of this. And we see the sea as something that is really important with that. We all know about this. I thought it was a cool slide. Wash your hands, we will we'll be well. So we're coastal people, as many of the whanau are around, around New Zealand. And so this is a very important concern for us. So we've had a long chat and long think over, over the last few years, to follow up here in the, in the throes of the last throes of their settlement. And uh, we decided that we wanted to do something big, not little. We need step change. We need what might be described as um, meaningful transformational change. I actually wrote Dreaming Big and then Go Big or Go Home. I thought I'd just write that in the end instead. So we've just recently been in, a, in America, 
One of the things that we've also identified, I mean, Māori people, even people are really entrepreneurial, right? I mean, trading for thousands of years um, all around the Pacific. And what our aspiration is, when you're going to go and do something, go and find the best and brightest people on the planet, form a good, solid relationship with them, and get on with it. That's kind of what we've done. So we've just been up in the States and Mexico. What we saw was absolutely astounding. The research that's going on in um, Ensenada and places like that, the hybrid breeding programs, it's not GMO, it's actually it's like breeding sheep, you know, you feed the fat ones and the woolly ones and stuff like that. So they're actually breeding, breeding seaweed at pace and scale. The particular breeding program that we had here, um, sorry, in, the, in, this, in this lab, they've got proteins of 45% by volume inside the seaweed. That's about three or four times more protein than a steak. So there's enormous opportunity with e numerous opportunities across the, across the seaweed um, families. You saw cryogenics. These guys are freezing and then bringing it back to life. We're really interested in um, securing our tonga, which is our, our, our frimurimuru, in a, in a frozen state to protect the species from... Um, from future global warming and seawater acidification. So we've got the technology to be able to do that. We also saw was a whole bunch of tank arrays where they're actually breeding, rebreeding, breeding, rebreeding. And um, you could track the changes in the, in the, in the kind of products or, or pieces of um, the compounds that you wanted to, um, to bring, bring to bear for nutrimedics and pharmaceuticals. She could see how they were lifting the percentages or the percentage of compounds inside the seaweeds and were breeding. We saw hatcheries, and these aren't baby hatcheries either, by the way. Um, we saw the designs, we saw the, the way that they operate, we saw standard operating procedures. I mean, these guys have been doing it for 10, 15, for some case, 20 years. So we've got mature marketing, mature people out there overseas who've been doing this for a long time and I'm sure can help us. We also saw seaweed farming, hectares and hectares of it. It's already up and running. It's quite nice sounding, it's it's warm. Um, so this is down in a place called Ediridia, which is about two or three hours uh, past Enchinada. For those who don't know where that is, it's about two hours past the border of um, um, Te Wala, where the mix of next to the crossing is at. We also went and saw the processing plants. We saw the logistics. We saw them dry it. We saw them chip it. We saw how they managed it, how they sorted it. We saw a whole range of different products. And we saw packaging. We saw the products going to market. We saw the commercial stuff, the, um, the retail stuff. We saw how they packaged it and, and um, how, they, how, they, how they boxed it, how they sent it away so it was safe for products all around the globe. We saw FDA approvals up the wazoo. I think these are, yeah, USDA organic, uh, non-GMO project verified, gluten-free, certified vegan. I mean, they've, got, they've, done all of the, they've done all of the research, they've done all the um, the the, the process is to ensure that the products can go to market globally. I think this was the best, but they put on a seven course meal and the seaweed was every meal. So we had seaweed and um, scallops and that crackers made out of seaweed. Down the bottom is crackers. There's a cake out of seaweed. It's just insane, this octopus and this fabulous. So we, we're only scratching the surface in the, in the culinary space. It's just amazing. Then you get a new dart out of it, out of seed. Just amazing. This is probably my best bit. The part I love the food, eh? So we've got a bunch of new partners. We've got design drawings, patents, operating procedures in the tanks and the labs, and cryogenics. We've got seaweeds, access to seaweed uh, research programs, genome sequencing, cryogenics. We've got the whole supply chain, if you like. We're going to lift and shift that and bring it to New Zealand. Where are we going to land it? We're just putting a resource or putting in a resource consent for 10,000 hectares of seawater space off the coast of Takaha. And um, we're well down the track. We've done the marine surveys. 
we're dropping at what the drug guys here that we saw might have seen yesterday. They're dropping some um, water monitoring boys uh, in the in the Moana literally next week. So we're a long way down the track there. That's a platform that we've also built. So we're able to collect loudly mouth of data, do big data analytics in the cloud on the fly of all the monitoring equipment, such as in my phone. And we're forming a new company. We're just going through the process of that right now. Um, you know, doing all that legal stuff. It's a bit boring, but it is what it is. It's got to be done. And on Monday, that announcement will still be late in America. If we just signed off for media release. So go back to Ewe and our aspirations. You've just seen what we've done in 12 months. Um, we have a really strong belief in our ability to do this. Um, we're not, we're reinforcing our connection to Tangaro. Um, we believe we're finding a path for a better path for our people. And, um, and we found the right way to do it. We found the right thing to do. It's tika. The tika and, and kletiakitanga is just on point for us. So yeah, that's, that's our little introduction, introduction to a little bit of insight into an iwi who's doing something a little bit different. Thank you.